Welcome everyone. So for this uh, tutorial, I am using the first person template and we will get started straight away. So we will go ahead into our modes first of all. Just search for 2D here and we will drag out a thing called uh, Scene Capture 2D. This will bring us a camera which will act as our uh, camera for the for the actual scene. So if I just uh, place one, say, right about here in this in this corner So this is our first camera. Now the next thing we need, we need to go ahead and get ourselves a uh, a texture target which did which dish will uh, cast to. So I will go ahead and just open this up and make a new render target. I'll just save this as uh, say camera one. And now this target basically has the view of this camera. One more thing uh, we'll do is we will right click on this camera one and then create a material from this. Now I will open up the material and I'll make sure the texture sample is a parameter so we can manually change it afterwards. Now I will go ahead and create a material instance from this and just in here I will just do a uh, right click and create a blueprint actor. And we'll, we'll call this, um, say, screens, or just, just screen, so bp underscore screen. Now inside here, I will just head over to the viewport and add a static mesh. And I'll just call this screen, and then on here, uh, I guess we can just use, ju just use a cube for this. Now if I just compile this, I'll just drag this BP out. So just about here. And I will just drag and drop this uh, this screen onto this. And if I just go ahead and just uh, basically not have anything on the x-axis, so I'll just do point 0.1 on the x-axis. And just move this out about here. This is just to demonstrate, you guys can use a plane as well, which should have the screen on there. Now, uh, I will just go ahead, compile and save this. And then I will just drag another copy from this camera here. Just take it out to the other end of the scene. Press F to focus on it. And then E to rotate this. And just bring it back in here. This will be our second one, so I will just right click on our render target and duplicate this, so I have a camera 2 now. And just drag and drop this into camera 2. And I will create a new material instance from our current material instance. And in here I can just drag and, so if I check this, I can drag and drop this down here. Save. And now, with our second screen, I will just go ahead, so if I leave this here, I'll just, um, so maybe perhaps I can make it slightly smaller. So I'll make this about say 0.6. So we'll have the first screen up here. And I'll hold Alt and drag this down to about here. And I will go into the static the, the screen inherited and just drag the material, the second material on here. Now this is our second view. Now I will go ahead and just select both of these and just alt and drag these across to get two more screens. And I'll just drag this again uh, into the middle, alt and just drag in the middle and I'll make this one slightly bigger than the rest. So about this big should be fine. So now what we will do is, so this screen uh, we will allow ourselves to cast any of the cameras onto this and this is all the individual cameras that we will have. So now I'll just go ahead and just uh, just alt this again and take this across to this side. So this basically is wherever you want your security cameras to be placed. Uh, so you guys can just like drag them around and do that. And then make another duplicate of the camera 3. Drag and drop this here. Create material ins instance. And inside here, once again, I will go ahead and set the camera 3. So now we have camera 1, camera 2, this can be camera 3, 
So drag and drop the third material on here. Just to make sure, yeah, they're all different. And then lastly, I'll just drag and just make a copy of this, alt and drag across the Y axis. And just go ahead and rotate this here. And this will serve as our last camera in this scene. Once again, one more copy of the texture. A new material instance. We can name these, you guys can name these properly as well, so you know exactly which one is which. So, camera 4, and then once again, the last camera. We will go ahead and set this up. Uh, we will drag the last material onto here. So now we have all four sides of the scene down here. Now there are some settings you guys can choose uh, based on where your scene is, scene capture. So you guys can set the uh, perspective for example if I just uh, go ahead and change the camera one. So you guys can change how much field of view there is in a camera. So all these settings are still uh, accessible down here. But sometimes I believe if it's um, Let's see. If it's a bit too dark, uh, you guys could use more settings down here to uh, increase the um, the the brightness of the clip. But that just depends on what needs to be done for you guys. So now that this is set up, I will just go ahead and select our um, middle screen. And if I just go to, we can actually set that up inside our level blueprint as well. So inside our level blueprint, I will say, uh, so enable input. So we'll just say event begin play. So first thing we'll do is we'll just set the cameras based on which key the, pr the player presses. Get player controller. Or perhaps we can say if we just drag out in our modes. A, a box collision. Or a box trigger. So when our player enters this trigger right next to the actual screen. And this is when we will enable the input. And inside here, we'll go ahead and create a reference to this. Well, see, that's not necessary, so we'll delete this reference. Or let's say, on overlap actor and begin overlap as long as our box is selected outside this is when we will enable the input not that even begin play then we will say whenever one is pressed we will make a reference to this to the first screen and we shall say set material on this screen and we will just drag number one here sorry my bad not this reference we'll select the center one and we will create a reference here so our BP screen the center one will update based on which button we press and if you press 2 again we'll just copy and paste this here select the same target press 2 then we'll change the material so when 3 is pressed and when 4 is pressed Now that this is done, we will just go ahead and choose the right uh, materials for this. So our first material goes on our first um, when one is pressed, second material when two is pressed, third material when three is pressed, and the last material when four is pressed. Now we'll just run a quick test. So if we run up to the screen down here, we press one, it stays one, it already has a screen, press two, goes to uh, view two, press 3 goes to view 3 and press 4 and it goes to view 4 so this is the basic way of setting this now we could go ahead in our uh, blueprint and we could set this up so uh, we can say um, the text appears so when you enter this in this box we can add some text here to appear to say uh, press when to toggle uh, one to toggle between screens or we can have a table here and then we can have a few 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 buttons that we can say press this button or, or this button. 
So it's all uh, it, it's all edit, uh, editable. I just want to show you guys how to set this up quickly. So thank you very, very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. I'll be uploading way more content. If you have any requests, make sure you leave them uh, in the in the comments below, and I will get to them one by one. Thank you very much down. for anyone that is interested. So this is the sequencer um, that you can download from the Learn tab in Unreal Engine inside the library. All I have done is just uh, edited a few things, taken off a few pictures, um, added my own pictures instead, and just added a few props here and there, changed the lighting and the post-process effects, uh, so everything looks a bit more uh, brighter. And also, um, so on this side, nothing actually existed. It was just an empty, empty area. So I just like uh, used the same meshes, just dragged them um, across, made an extra room, just put a door here. And with this inside here, I just put more lights, increase the uh, intensity, change them to white. And on here, I have about uh, four different, uh, four, five different blueprints, including this one. So which basically allows me to uh, cast any of these screens onto here by simply changing the material which I have all set up down here. So it's very similar to what I have shown you guys in the uh, tutorial already. So all I'm doing is um, inside here. Now the, I did have one issue where uh, my actual um, my actual like uh, the cameras were very very dark because the scenes tend tend to be very dark so I actually increased the um, intensity down here I believe I did that uh, inside the actual um, the actual camera so I have four cameras the first one is right here set up here second one I have is right outside this door uh, one more just up here and the last one is right here now I think I selected all of these and down here in their settings I did let me just see if I can find that for you guys I remember it being under a global and I just changed the um, the brightness but anyways this is a setting that you guys can I can't quite seem to find it right now but this is a setting you guys can change or increase uh, depending on how uh, dark or bright your your cameras actually look and then inside the actual blueprint I'm actually still using the the, the matinee just because this project actually allowed that so all I'm having is uh, so when the event begins play I'm playing a sound which basically is the is the water dropping sound and just an ambient noise around the area then I'm playing the matinee where the camera itself the camera starts from here just goes down follows all the way along and every time the camera turns, I'm using a linear mode inside the matinee actor. Uh, so li what linear does is linear basically allows us to have more smooth curves. Um, so like this, so it actually curves properly and then goes ahead rather than having just like the camera turn instantly, which doesn't actually look very nice. So I'm using those curves and then the camera ends up here, right next to the screen. And as soon as the camera gets here, the next thing that happens is I'm giving us a, a, sec, a 17 second delay. This is the time it takes for it to get there to this door. And then I'm just, uh, so I just selected a door, made a reference to it in here, added a timeline and just, I'm just editing the Z axis. So the door opens along the Z axis uh, within, within one second. And then after a two second delay, uh, this we can ignore, just doesn't actually do anything in there. And then after 1.5 second delay, I am changing the first screen material down here. So I am setting the first camera and then after one second, second camera, 1.5 second, um, one more camera and one second, another camera. So this was uh, just a scene I, I set up to show you guys the, the potential of like a control room like this. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. So make sure you give me a follow and make sure you request whatever you guys would like to see on this channel. And I, I am getting to your projects one by one. There's just a huge list right now. So thank you very much for your time and bye.